left my notes somewhere, I'll go and find them. Good morning. Welcome to worship back here in our usual place at the usual time after a lovely shared service last Sunday in Dunlop Village Hall when we had our stated annual meeting and we had our lunch together and there was lots of chatter and companionship and fellowship. So we'll do that again sometime and we'll, we'll do it in the Muir Hall, I think. So that would be lovely. Just um, a notice for you to let you know that Caldwell Messy Church are celebrating their fifth birthday today. So they're going to be having a party in and around the grounds outside the church and in the church hall. You'll see some bunting up at the back already. So if you're going past sometime after two o'clock this afternoon, do come in and say hello and maybe join in with some of the games. We're gathered here as the disciples were in the upper room. We are gathered here because we are called by Jesus, because we know him as our friend and our brother. And we recall that he said to the disciples in their anxiety and their fear, peace be with you. I invite you now to share the peace with one another. worried there that you were going to have to sing a duet after all <laughs> instead of a duet I asked Sadie just to play something just to calm us and settle us and centre us into our worship after moving around and sharing the peace with each other you're invited to come and just sit down and put down all that weighs heavily upon you and breathe. You're invited to let this time of worship offer you the chance for some time out as you make room for Christ to step in, to carry you, to heal you, to inspire and re-energize you. We bring our worship and our praise into this time, into this space, 
as we sing together our opening hymn. Praise to the Lord the Almighty. Let us bring ourselves before the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, let our lips and our lives praise you. Let our hearts and our voices sing to you. Help us to honour you as you deserve without holding back. We thank you for standing by us. We thank you for being there to pick us up when we fall. We thank you for continuing to love us even when we put your patience to the test. Forgive us for those times when we forget that you care deeply for us. Forgive us for those times when we deliberately turn our backs on you. Forgive us for those times when we try to rely fully on ourselves and other people instead of looking to you and your ways for guidance, inspiration and care. Help us, Lord God, to turn to you more, to look to you more often for your help, for your guidance, for your healing. Keep reminding us that we are not the ones who have the answer to every problem. You do. Grant us, we pray, the wisdom to let you lead us 
and guide us. Speak and make us listen. So may we find and know the fullness of life you promise. All these things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. When you come into the service this morning, you were given a wee folded piece of paper, a mystery square. One person at least knows what it is and said so. And we're told to wish Graham <laughs> and not to, he started unfolding it. If you hold it so that this kind of opening is vertical in the middle, and if you kind of so you can see that it's going to open a bit at the top. I'd like you to take the pen and write your name underneath that opening. So you'll write your name there. I'll write mine and show you. See if this works. So you would write it there. Can you see that? Once you've written your names, if you hold it again like that, so the vertical opening, and tease it, pull it apart from the sides, like that, so it'll start to tease apart, and pull it gently like that. In our gospel reading this morning, we're hearing about Jesus and the disciples, and they're in a boat. boat. <laughs> they're not in a hat, <laughs> but they could be in a hat. It's too small to be a hat. So they are in a boat. I think if you tease it out a little bit, it might stand. And hopefully your name should appear where the name of a boat would normally appear. This is also Sanctuary Sunday or Refugee Sunday. When in many churches we're thinking about those people who are displaced, those people who are forced for different reasons to travel from their homes, from their homelands very often, to find safety and sanctuary and peace and calm in another country. And they face many, many challenges. And we know, because we are an island, that so many people risk their lives on very small boats, some of which probably aren't very much safer than these wee paper boats that we have created. So today, as part of our thinking, we think of those people who are in the small boats In our Gospel reading, we're going to be hearing of a day when Jesus and the disciples were in a boat and they were sailing over to the other side of the lake when they hit a storm and the disciples were terrified and Jesus told the wind to stop blowing. Jesus commanded the waves to calm down and they did. The wind which had been threatening to blow their wee boat over and the waves, which had been so wild and so strong that they were swamping the boat and filling it with water, the wind and the waves, the weather, listened to what Jesus had to say and calmed right down. And you might think that that would have calmed the disciples down as well, but it seems that this made them even more afraid. 
It freaked them out. That Jesus had done this, that Jesus had been able to command the wind and the waves. In the Greek, there are two different words for fear used in this reading from Mark's Gospel. One is the fear that we might commonly associate with being in a a difficult, a tricky, even a dangerous situation. The other is a kind of slightly different kind of fear. Profound fear, a focused fear. And was that second fear because the disciples all of a sudden realized whose company they were in? That the man who had been sleeping on a cushion in the boat was none other than God himself. For they knew from the scriptures that only God could command the sea like Jesus had just done. And they were overcome with awe. Not just with what Jesus had done, but with the sudden overwhelming knowledge of who Jesus really was. We continue our worship now as we sing together hymn 189, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. Our first reading this morning is from Psalm 89, verses 1 to 2 and 5 through to 11. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Let the heavens praise your wonders, O Lord, your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies can be compared to the Lord? Who among the heavenly beings is like the Lord, a God feared in the council of the holy ones? 
great and awesome above all that are around him. O Lord God of hosts, who is as mighty as you, O Lord? Your faithfulness surrounds you. You rule the raging of the sea when its waves rise, you still them. You crushed Rahab like a carcass. You scattered your enemies with your mighty arm. The heavens are yours. The earth also is yours. The world and all that is in it, you have founded them. Our second reading is from Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. On that day when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great gale arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion, and they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Amen. Thank you. We continue our worship now as we sing hymn number 260, Eternal Father, Strong to Save.
Who is this man? The disciples asked. Who is this man? Who is he that even the wind and the waves obey him? And when they said that, they weren't speaking out of admiration for their teacher. They weren't talking amongst themselves because they were blown away by this amazing thing that Jesus had just done. Right at that moment, it seems that they wanted or would have been happy to be elsewhere, to be anywhere, just not there. Because what had just happened had overwhelmed them with fear. They were happy enough at the beginning of this story when they set sail with Jesus. But then things escalated, as they can do when you're on a wee boat on a lake renowned for its sudden squalls and storms. To be fair to the disciples, they already knew that there was something very different, very special about Jesus. They could see there was something about him, that Jesus was able to to help them, to help others. That he was able to make a real and strong connection with God and with God's teaching in a way that was life-enriching, life-changing for everyone who came into contact with him. They had experienced his preaching, his teaching. They'd watched the way he lived. They'd taken note of the quiet times he had regularly alone with God. And they also saw the way that he could talk to and get along with all sorts of people from all different backgrounds, making everyone feel so special, so loved, so known. They had seen him healing people, all sorts of people with all sorts of illnesses. And they'd seen him performing other kinds of miracles. They'd seen him change water into wine. What a gift, they thought. It's one that nowadays many people would love to have. But what happened that day on the lake, in the boat, took everything up to a completely different level. To a level that they, the disciples, his friends and companions, were simply not prepared for. Suddenly Jesus moved in their heads from being a great guy, gifted and insightful and inspirational, to to what? Who was he? Suddenly they couldn't make head nor tail of him. And what they thought they knew of Jesus suddenly fell away. And not just because of what he did with the wind and the waves. They must have been thinking, what normal person could sleep through a storm? Who else could sleep on, oblivious to the pitching and rolling of the tiny boat they were on, on an angry lake? drenched by the spray of water and crashing waves. Even the experienced fishermen among the disciples must have thought they were about to drown while Jesus slept on. Didn't he care about them? So they woke him up and told him so. Don't you care about us, Jesus? Don't you care that we're all about to die here? And in response, Jesus got up, calmed the seas, stilled the storm. And then he turned to them and asked them why they were frightened. And he looked back at him and he thought, who are you? The storm out in the lake must have been pretty bad if even seasoned fishermen were worried that they were going to drown. So we can understand their fears rising and rising while Jesus slept. And maybe it was their fear that made them react the way they did to Jesus. Maybe it was the fear that induced the lack of faith 
which meant that they thought that he simply didn't care about them. Maybe it was their fear in the storm faced with life and death that they became aware of how frail they were. And when Jesus had the wind and the waves obey him, they realized that while he might literally have been in the same boat as them, there was something more to Jesus than any of them had fully realized, fully understood, fully appreciated. That this man who had been sleeping on the cushion in the boat was God himself. And so they went from being almost overwhelmed by the waves to being fully, totally overwhelmed by this sudden knowledge of not just what Jesus could do, but of who Jesus was. And suddenly it dawned on them that in fact nothing, nothing was beyond the reach of Jesus. Nothing was beyond his knowing including them. Inside as well as out, there is no hiding from Jesus. The wee boats that you have now with your names on them. Imagine these wee boats representing the journey of your life. That journey will have had moments of flat calm, smooth sailing that offered you the time and the space just to enjoy the people around you, to enjoy the experiences you were having as well as the places and things that brought a smile to your face. But there would also have been times when that flat calm meant that you were stalled you were stopped, unable to get to where you wanted to be. Stuck. Many, many people have had to live with the frustration of not being able to do what they wanted. Maybe for lack of opportunity or for lack of resources or a multitude of other things which can hold us back. Then there are exciting times. Times when life seems to race along, when we've got a speedboat, not a rowing boat. And your heart pumps and the adrenaline flows and everything is just so exciting. But for many of us, for probably all of us, I'm sure, There have been darker times when, like the disciples in the boat with Jesus that day, things were dire. And we might think that we are going under. Times when it's hard to see a way forward. And that might have been because circumstances beyond our control, like the storm and the lake for the disciples, But it might also be true that we were tossed and blown about by decisions that we ourselves had made or things that we had said or done, none of which were for the best. And coming to terms with mistakes that we make, as well as our faults and our feelings, isn't easy. For many of us, our first instinct is to look for other people to blame. So much easier, so much more satisfying to point the finger at someone else. But the uncomfortable truth that came to the disciples that day in the water was that actually these things need to be faced, not least because they are already known to God in Christ. And where that initial realization terrified the disciples, they soon found a freedom in no longer having to pretend, no longer trying to hide behind a mask, a facade that they had created. 
When they realized that Jesus was in fact God and they realized that Jesus knew them fully, they also realized that he loved them anyway, despite their flaws, despite their mistakes, despite their continuing tendency, as we know, to get things wrong. So I invite you all to keep your wee boat. And when you look at it, remember that in the good times and in the bad, when we do well and when we mess up, Jesus is. And that Jesus will always be. And that's not terrifying. That's liberating. And it inspires us to try and be more, especially to be more like him. Amen. Our offering for the work of the church will now be received. Let us pray. Draw us close, O God, closer to you and closer to one another. May your spirit overflow and your love run deep. May we be renewed in you. And even as we offer these gifts of money, may you open our hearts and minds to a deeper awareness of our new identity in you, in full knowledge of who you are. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We come together now in our prayers for God's world and God's people and the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Creator God, you made the sun to shine and the stars to come out at night. You made day to follow night and the rainbow to come with the rain. But everyone experiences days when clouds gather and the skies darken. Everyone endures long nights when the stars are hidden and darkness seems to have the upper hand. And we all have days when it feels as though the rain is never going to stop. At those times, God of all, remind us of your constant presence with us. And remind us too of how you came to reassure us that you can calm every storm, whether within or without. We offer into your loving, storm-stopping hands those who are ill, those who are bereaved, and all who worry. Whether those worries are about family or work, friends or health or making ends meet, 
hold all who are feeling swamped by life and bring them to peace. We offer into your loving, storm-stopping hands, Lord Jesus, those for whom the storms seem unending. We think of those who feel so vulnerable and frightened in their own homelands that they choose to set sail for other countries in the hope of being safe. We think of those exploited on the way and of those who arrive to suspicion and prejudice. We pray for a kindness in this world that dares to treat all with respect and with dignity and ask that kindness might begin with us. We bring to you the storm that is politics. And in this time leading up to the general election, we pray for the courage to see your vision for our land and for our people, as well as for this world which is yours. Make peace a priority for all parties, alongside care for the most vulnerable, both here in the UK and throughout the world. Grow in those who are standing for election a passion and a desire to serve rather than to govern. So may those who need help most be enabled to find it. Fulfill your plan, Lord God, for all to have enough to live life in all its fullness. Lord, teach us to live as you live, putting love first and self-interest last. So may we honour you as the God of miracles, the God who never leaves us. Hear us now, Lord God, as we pray together as your family, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm not sure how many of you here were in the boys' brigades. Looking at the the balance of men and women, I suspect the BB boys are in a minority, but we're going to sing what is very well known as the BB hymn. We're going to close our worship with hymn number 737, Will Your Anchor Hold?
in the calmest seas and in the wildest storms. Help us, Lord, to trust that you are with us and that you care for us. Glory be to you, Creator, and to you, our Lord Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit, this day and every day. Thank you.